Hello everyone. My name is Hemu and today we are go we are going to discuss 10 questions of 10 interview questions of Palo Alto Firewall. So the thing is if you can see in my screen I have mentioned these are the 10 questions which I am going to discuss in your today's session. And guys all these particular questions these particular recordings of this particular class these recordings you will get into my youtube channel and also that recording available into our video portal so from both places you will get these recordings okay now let me just start with with your first session first question so like let's suppose you are going for an interview if they are asking what are the different modes in which interface of palo alto firewall can be configured or generally <coughs> This particular question is also asked by the ask into multiple interviewers like they will ask you one thing. Can you explain the Palo Alto firewall deployment modes? How many type of deployment mode is supported by the Palo Alto firewall? So in that case, what do you have to do? You have to start with the first deployment mode, which is supported by Palo Alto is tap a mode deployment. Tap mode deployment, then you have to explain the second deployment mode is V wire deployment mode, or we can say virtual wire deployment. This virtual wire deployment is also known as transparent deployment or bump in the wire deployment. And the third deployment type is your layer to deployment. Fourth type of deployment is your layer three deployment. You can also now. These are the generally four type of deployment mode, which is supported by the Palo Alto firewall. OK, now. If they will ask what what are the deployment mode is supported by the Palo Alto firewall interfaces in that case what you have to do you can go into your Palo Alto firewall into network tab. And if you will if I'll go inside this interface. If you will click on interface type you can see here. <laughs> if I want to configure my Palo Alto firewall with tap mode deployment in that case I have to select this interface as a tap mode interface. If I want to deploy this firewall as a virtual wire, in that case I have to select the interface type is virtual wire. If I want to config, if I want to deploy Palo Alto firewall in layer two, then I have to select the interface type is layer two. And if I want to configure <coughs> the Palo Alto firewall in layer three deployment, then we have to select the type is layer three. We can also use these particular interface as a H interface. Let's suppose you are deploying two firewalls in high availability. In that case, both firewall you have to connect with the H cables. And generally, if you are working in the hardware boxes, these hardware boxes, they have a dedicated H interfaces. But if you are configuring the HA high availability in the virtual in, in the VM series firewalls, in that case, you have to configure your data interface as a HA type interface. There is a one more interface type is also supported by the Palo Alto firewall, which is. Mirror. Or we can say SSL broker. So these are the generally. These are the some type of your interfaces which you can able to configure or <laughs> these are the few modes of your Palo Alto firewall, which you generally prefer when you are deploying in the production environment. Now, if I'll say the tap mode deployment, which means it's a IDS type of solution means in tap mode deployment, we will just get the traffic visibility. Let's suppose we have a setup like this. Let's suppose you have an existing setup. You have here your LAN segment where your employees are available. Here you have your server zone. Where your all type of servers is available. And after that what we have here one switch. 
and all these these servers servers and you employ they have a connected with this switch and after that here you have one firewall this is a let's suppose cisco esa firewall and this ASA firewall finally have a internet connectivity with the internet service provider. We have this type of setup. Guys, now tell me one thing. By using this Cisco ASA firewall, we, we can able to configure the access list using the layer three, inter, layer three interface, layer three information of your packet and layer four information from the packet, which is your source IP, source port, destination IP and destination port. Guys, in this ASA firewall, do we do we get any type of layer seven protection? Let's suppose we have one server here and one of the employees communicating with this server. And now on that server, there is a one dot bat file is available and that file, that bat file having some type of anti, some type of virus code is available into this file. Now, if this bat file is this PC is trying to download through this particular server. Is your ASA firewall able to catch? Yes, no in the chat, guys. Do we have uh, that type of visibility on your ASA firewall? No, because it's a legacy firewall, right? Now, guys, there is a one requirement actually. What is the what is your requirement? Your manager came and he just asked. He he don't want to block the downloading of this file, but he just want visibility. What type of traffic is flowing? Is there any type of malicious content is going on? We just need the visibility. We don't want to enforce any type of protection here. We just want visibility. What type of traffic is flowing? Is there any type of malicious traffic is going or how it is? And if this is a requirement in that case, what you have to do, you have to consider a deployment mode of your Palo Alto firewall, which is tap mode deployment. What you have to do, you have to simply, you have to connect your Palo Alto firewall with this switch. Let's say this interface Ethernet one by one is your Palo Alto five interface. That interface type you have to select as a tap mode. And let's say this port is F0 by 0 and this port is F0 by 1. We have F0 by 2 and F0 by 3. Guys, now tell me. Whatever traffic is initiated by these people, so if anything coming towards your LAN segment or towards your server zone, that traffic will go through with this interface or not? All the traffic will go through with this interface. So what we have to do in this switch, we will configure there is a one technology called a span. In a span technology, what used to happen, whatever packet is going out from this interface and whatever packet is coming into this interface, what this switch used to do, it create a copy of these packets and will forward these packets towards your Palo Alto firewall. Now your Palo Alto Five will receive this traffic and what it will do, it will check this traffic against the content engine, against the configured security profiles and it will provide you the visibility if there is any type of malicious content is going on. So guys, this is known as your tap mode deployment. Now, let's suppose now your management is very happy because now they have a visibility if there is any type of malicious content is going on. But now what they have seen lots of malicious traffic is going through. Now they don't want visibility. Now they want enforcement means if there is any malicious content, they want to block that content. Guys, do, do be able to block that particular content with the help of ASA firewall? Yes, no in the chat. No, ASA is not able to do that, right? Because you know, ASA can only able to understand the layer three and layer four header, but ASA will not understand layer seven header, right? But Palo will to do understand. It can able to understand layer three, layer four and layer seven. We need some type of next generation firewall. So now what used to happen in that case? So guys, enhancement, 
on your tap mode deployment is known as a virtual wire deployment or transparent deployment or bump in the wire deployment in this virtual wire deployment what used to happen and instead of putting the firewall here like we did in in your tap mode deployment now what they used to do in production environment, what used to be let's say we have this interface which is f0y2 and we have this interface it one by two and here we have it one by three any anything right so what they used to do now they will cut this particular wire into two pieces and they will they will put here asa fire they will put here palo alto firewall how they will do that they will cut this wire into two pieces and they will put the palo alto firewall here now let's say this we have connected ethernet one by one here and let's say ethernet two by one by two here in that case now on the palo alto fire we have to configure these two interfaces as a v wired interfaces type of these interfaces v wire and we have to put these two interfaces into the same group same same virtual wire group and guys what is the benefit of deploying this particular firewall in virtual wire because you know let's suppose between this switch and this asa firewall you are running ospf and you have some type of ip scheme say let's suppose we have one ip address here which is 10.1.1.1 and here we have ip address 10.1.1.2 so let's 24 guys if you will deploy your firewall in v wire deployment which means you don't need to modify your ip scheme you don't need to change anything with regards to the routing protocol so these type of benefits you will get apart from that benefit you now you can able to configure any type of security here you can configure the security policy because you know now we have configured our palo alto firewall aligned to the network and it will enforce all the security profiles all the security posture whatever we will configure in this palo alto firewall so that is known as your virtual wire deployment and after that guys layer 3 deployment everyone know and guys in most of the environment we will deploy palo alto firewall in layer 3 mode only around 98 percent peoples deploy palo alto firewall in layer 3 because you know Palo Alto is a costly device, okay? And you we do Palo Alto do support the layer two deployment. Let's suppose, guys, tell me one thing. We have one server here, and we have these two PC here. Now let's suppose PC one, this one. On this PC, there is a one virus. There is a one virus into this PC. Now just tell me guys, now this virus is start spreading. It can spread to this PC and it can also spread till this server, right? Is this switch able to protect us from these kind of issues? Yes, no in the chat. It will not protect, right? So guys, in such kind of environment, instead of this switch what you can use the palo alto firewall and you can deploy this palo alto firewall in layer two mode like we have here switch so that is your layer two deployment there is a there is a one use case for layer two deployment but we will discuss this thing in some other sessions cool so guys this is the answer of your first question what is that what what are the different modes in which interface on Palo Alto Firewall can be configured. Now, let me just move towards the next question. What is the function of zone protection profile? What is the function of zone protection profile? Guys, anyone know what is zone protection profile? There is a one question from Mohammed Kureshi. So, man, I have already covered that. What about HA, sir? HA, I have already covered in your inter interview series. Okay, there are the videos available on my portal. Okay, cool. 
so guys now let's try to understand what is the function of zone protection profile or in interview what they will ask you what is zone protection in your palo alto firewall if they will ask you that question then how you will answer now let me just try to explain you this particular so let's suppose i have my palo alto firewall here i have this palo alto firewall here let's suppose here i have my dmz zone on dmz let's suppose i have one of the web server this is my web server guys web server runs on which port right on the chat So generally in most of the time it runs on port 80 or either port 443 right okay cool so we have this web server now and we have here attacker now let's suppose this web server have ip which is 10.2.2.101 and this is my dmz inter which is ethernet 1 by 3 and this is my ethernet 1 by 1 interface let's suppose this interface is a part of outside zone and this interface is a part of dmz zone and on my outside interface i have ip address in this series 151.7.0 slash 24 where dot 250 i have here let's hold at isp and i have dot one and i have one one ip address which is 151 .7 .101 on this particular ip address i have basically configured the dnet towards my inside server this is the public ip now guys now because you know now i have this attacker now what this attacker what he can able to do with this particular server generally guys what it it can able to do it can able to launch some type of attacks what are these attacks? It can launch a very, very popular attack, which is TCP SYN flood attack. It can launch UDP flood attack. It can launch ICMP flood attack. It can launch other IP flood attack. It can it can also able to do the scanning using the nmap tool. I can say port scanning. It can also able to do your IP spoofing attack. And the seventh one, it can also launch some other packet based attack. Now, guys, tell me one thing. If you want a protection from all such kind of attacks, using your Palo Alto firewall, what you have to do? You have to configure the zone protection profile. Means you have to enable the zone protection into your outside zone and you have to enable the zone protection into your DMZ zone. So you have to configure the zone protection profile if you want to protect your environment from these type of attacks, like your TCP SYN flood, flood, UDP flood, ICMP flood, other IP flood. These attacks is also known as DDoS attack. And guys, all these attacks, they used to happen on the basis of layer three information and on the basis of layer four information, which means your zone protection profile protect us from the network based attacks. It will not protect you from any type of virus or vulnerability, not such kind of attack. It can able to protect the attacks which is happening using your IP information, using your port information. 
so guys got it what is zone protection profile if somebody ask are you able to uh, are you able to answer that question yes no on the chat so zone protection profile we will we will generally use to protect our server from the flooding attack from the ip spoofing attack from the port scanning attack and from the packet based attack okay cool what is this packet based attack guy you know what is packet based attack anybody and guys generally let me just tell you the zone protection we used to apply into all the zones generally but if you want to go a specific you can apply on outside zone in most of the time but i highly recommend you can also also like enable on your inside zone or dmz zone because you know we don't know let's suppose sometimes some of your internal machine got compromised that time maybe you will get the attack from your internal machines as well they these machine they act as a victim and your packet based attack means what they used to do they used to send a high size packets they will modify some content inside the packet okay so the all these thing comes under the packet based attack cool so this is the answer of your second question now guys let's try to understand what is u turn very very popular question which is asked in your interview what is the concept of u turn now let's try to understand this u turn concept guys so to let me if i want to explain the u turn net concept what i have to do i have to draw one diagram with the help of that diagram you guys only able to understand u turn net and this it's a very very popular question guys in your interviews now let's try to understand this thing i have my firewall here and guys i am explaining everything with regards to palo alto firewall okay and after that i have one switch here behind this switch i have one pc pc1 and i have one server here server 1 that pc have ip address 10.1.1.81 that server have ip address 10.1.1.220 this is my this interface of firewall is in inside zone i have one more interface ethernet 1 by 1 which is out in part of outside zone and we have here internet service provider isp and guys here somewhere i have one public dns let's say that public dns ip address is 171.1.1 hypothetical i am taking all these values okay so do not confuse with that and there is a one pc i am having here like this is my internet user now on this server let's so this server i have hosted on port number 443 means i am running my company website which is cnets.com i have hosted on that particular server cool we have this environment now let's try to understand this u turn net now guys i have this setup so tell me one thing if i want to host this particular server over the internet what i need like on this pc let's suppose on this internet pc if somebody type this https colon crnets.com if they will put this url and if when they will put this url that request come to this server and the web page of our website will open now what are the things we need so first thing we have to configure the domain name 
We need one domain name, right, to host our website. Second thing, we need a public IP. Third thing, we have to configure the destination net on firewall. And fourth thing, we have to configure the security policy on the firewall. These are the four things we require generally. So let's suppose what we did. What we did. From this internet service provider, we have purchased one public IP address, which is 151.7.100. This is this is the public IP which I have purchased. And I have also purchased one domain name. I have also purchased the domain name, which is cnets.com. Now, when I have purchased this public IP, so I have configured the DNet. I have configured the DNet on my Palo Alto firewall. 10.1.1.22 means if I have my firewall receive request on this IP, it will forward these requests to verse server one. It will do that destination net translation. And I have also configured this security policy. These two things I did here. I have purchased the domain name from the ISP and guys that domain name detail. I have they have created one a record here into this public DNS where they will put. CNets.com IP addresses 151.7.100. That entry is there. Now, tell me one thing. Now on this system, on this system, now if I will open this request, when I will put this particular URL in this system browser, what will happen? First DNS resolution. Now once, when this system will do the DNS resolution for cns.com, which IP address he will get? This IP address is 151.7.100 because you know his request reached to first DNS server. He will give the reply. Now, once he will get the IP report, he will forward the request towards the firewall. Now, firewall sees, oh, this request coming on this IP report. He will do the destination net translation. Security policy is already there. So now this request reached here. Communication is happening. Well and good. Everything is fine. Till here. Now let's take an example in this way. Now let me just clean these things little bit. Now, guys, what we did instead of now what we are trying to access that particular website from this PC. On this PC, what I did, I just Open the browser and I just typed https colon cnets.com. I did that. Now, when I just put this UI in the website, what will happen? First, DNS resolution will happen. So, guys, now this DNS request will reach till public DNS from this PC. And he will get the IP address, which is 151.7.100, right? Yes, no. Which IP address this PC will get when he will resolve that cnets.com? Guys, you there? Reply on the chat. So they will get this IP address now. This PC, he will forward this request towards the firewall. Now, when he will forward this request, so he will create a packet 10.1.1.81. This is the source IP address, and the destination IP address is 151.7.100. Now, this is the destination IP address. Now, when this request reached to the firewall, in this firewall, we have configured the destination net. What will happen? Firewall just 
do the destination net for 150, 1.7.100. And what he will do, he will translate that IP address, which is with 10.1.1.220 means. Now this particular packet redirect towards here. Sources 10.1.1.81. And destination IP address is 150, 1.7.100. Sorry, not that one. 10.1.1.220. This is source IP. This is destination IP because you know this file will do the DNet. Now this packet is to here. Now what this server will do, will do. Now server also wants to give the reply. Now when server create a packet in the reply, server put his source IP 10.1.1.220. And destination IP because you know he's receiving the request from this source. So that source become the destination. Now this packet go directly here because you know both system and server they are in the same segment. Because you know now they are in the same segment that request reach to this PC now. Guys, tell me one thing. In this PC, when he has initiated the request, he has initiated the request on this IP address, and he, he is getting the reply from this IP address. Do this particular PC re receive that particular packet? What he will do? He will silently drop that packet because you know he is expecting the reply from this IP address, but he is getting the reply from this one. That is known as that's the problem, guys. That is the problem we will be having. What is the solution of this problem? So we have a two solution for this particular problem. The first solution. You can configure one local DNS. And the second solution, you can configure the Uternet. Okay, now let's try to understand this particular solution. So, what I can do, let me just do the cleanup a little bit. Okay, so guys, what we will do if if we will introduce here one local DNS server. And on this local DNS server, what we will do, we will simply create one A record. On this A record, we will put crnets.com. IP address is 10.1.1.220. Now when this PC, he will resolve that, do the DNS resolution, which IP address he will get that time. And instead of getting this, he will get this IP address 10.1.1.220 and he will communicate directly, even though that request will not go till firewall. And they can able to communicate easily without any, without having any type of problem. Okay, so that is that is the one solution. You can introduce, introduce the local DNS, but let me tell you guys in production environment, what used to happen, people or they they will not introduce the local DNS server. Because you know, they have a DNS server in regional buys. Either you, they have to create that particular record into the regional DNS server or the best solution for this problem, what they can do, they can configure the Uternet. In Uternet, what they will do, when they will configure the Uternet, so what that time they used to, they will have one D, DNet, but along with that DNet, they will also configure the PAT here, port address translation here on this interface. Means, now when this request is coming to that IP address 
and when your, your firewall received that request, what it will do? Now firewall instead instead of changing this IP address, he will also modify this IP address. And what he will do? He will put the IP of this interface. Let's say this interface have IP address 1.1.250. So what he will put that IP address 10.1.1.250. Now when this server he will create a reply, he will not send that directly reply to here. He will send that reply to 10.1.1.250. Means now this packet goes to firewall. Now in firewall it has a exit table. So it will again do the unnet and it will forward that request here. So that's how your Uternet solved this particular problem. That is your guys, Uternet in your Palo Alto firewall. And guys, Uternet concept is similar into almost all the devices. Okay. Now let's try to understand what is what is virtual routers and what is virtual systems. What is virtual router and what is virtual system? So guys, now let's try to understand these things. In Palo Alto Firewall, we have a two things. We have a virtual router known as VR. We have a concept of virtual systems known as VSYS. So guys, let me tell you one thing. Let's suppose we have this Palo Alto firewall here. That's why it's a Palo Alto 5220 box. One data center type of device we are having here. Now, let's suppose here we have a, we are, we are hosting some type of data center services and here we have a, servers for three companies we have some servers from scl we have a servers from bipro and we have a server from tcs these are the three company servers which we are having in our behind this particular firewall now guys and after that this firewall it has a connectivity here with the internet Now these SCL peoples, they have requested, they don't want to mix their traffic with the Bipro or TCS servers. In that case, what we can do, we so we have this big firewall here, one big physical box. We can create a multiple virtual box here or multiple logical instance of the firewall. Means, we can divide single physical box into multiple logical boxes. Like this is like firewall one, then we have created firewall two and we have created firewall three. And all now these firewalls we have provided to these companies. Now, the traffic which is coming from SCL servers, it will not interact with the Bipro TCS servers. Now we did the traffic segregation. Means virtual system is a concept of dividing or creating the multiple logical firewalls or virtual firewalls in a single physical firewall. And guys, these type of deployment and these type of things you will see into multiple organizations. And guys in ISP environment, you will see these type of things a lot. That is known as virtual systems. Virtual system is a technique or is a concept inside your Palo Alto firewall, which we use to divide a physical firewall into multiple logical firewalls. Guys, this in if you will heard the name on Cisco S, if you have worked with the Cisco S, we have a concept of context. Virtual system is equal to context. In your routers, if you heard the name of VRF, it is same. <coughs> In your FortiGate firewall, if you heard the name of BDOMS. In your Nexus, you will heard the name of BDC. All are similar, guys. 
all type of devices nowadays they will support the context or virtual systems or vrf so b domes or bdc such kind of such kind of techniques is there if you are working with cisco ftd then they have an instance like instance one instance two all are similar guys now you virtual router virtual router generally we use in your palo alto firewall to enable the routing means if you want to configure the routing in your palo alto firewall you have to create the virtual routers means to enable the routing engine in your palo alto firewall we have to create the virtual routers okay so that's uh, that is your virtual router and that is your virtual systems concept is very easy now let's try to understand what is service route what is the concept of service route in your palo alto firewall so guys let me give you one example very very popular example or let me just go into my palo alto firewall let me go into my device tab setup it's bit slow services service route configuration so guys this is the place where we have to configure the service route like in device tab we have a setup then we have to go into services then we have a service route configuration now right now i am in a service route configuration tab let's wait here so guys this service route generally see in palo alto firewall palo alto firewall or your pan os basically it has a management interface right and it will use this management interface for communicating with different different type of things what are these different type of things let's suppose if you have configure let's suppose if your firewall wants to do the dns resolution so by default what it will use the management interface for the dns resolution communication when you will put like ping host facebook.com that time your palo alto firewall will use the management interface to do the dns resolution for facebook.com for cnets.com that time it use the so like that time it use the management interface so guys your palo alto firewall use the management interface for different type of communication like auto focus communication crl status if your palo alto firewall needs to check the status of your certificate certificate revocation list check your data services your D dns require your panorama post updates your external dynamic list your email if we have configured some email notification in your palo alto firewall kerberos ldap communication so guys all such kind of communication for all such kind of communication your palo alto firewall use the management interface like for ldap communication for netflow ntp panorama what it will by default use the management interface now guys let me just tell you one thing let's suppose we have a setup like this i have my firewall i have my management network here let's have management network on this segment 192.160.137.0/24 i have my inside segment here this is my inside interface and here i have one server which is ad server active directory now guys what i want i wants to do the ad integration in your palo alto firewall so guys when you do the active directory integration in your palo alto firewall by default your palo alto firewall use the management interface for the communication purpose but your active directory server is behind your inside interface and your inside interface have this ip address let's suppose 
what we have to do now in that case if you want to now in that case what you have to do you have to tell your palo alto firewall if your palo alto wants to reach out to your ad server which is 10.1.1.220 for this server what he has to do he has to send the request via this interface rather than using the management interface because you know my ad server is behind this interface thunder one by two and how you will do that you have to modify the service route you have to change the default behavior and what do you have to do because you know that active directory integration we used to do with the help of ldefs in your Palo Alto firewall. So the thing is what you have to do, you have to go to into your Palo Alto firewall and you have to select this LDAP. By default, it will use, use default means it is using the management tab. What you have to do, you have to select which interface you want to use. I want to use my inside interface, which is Ethernet one by two. When you will do that, after that only your firewall able to communicate with the active directory and your AD integration will work. Otherwise, your Active Directory integration will not work. So guys, service route we used to configure in your Palo Alto firewall to change the default communication or to change the default behavior of your management interface for the communication purpose for the different type of services like your LDAP server, your DNS server, your Panorama server, your update servers and all, right? So for that, what you have to do? You have to do the service route change in that right of scenarios. I have seen in lots of time, guys, what people used to face. Generally, their management interface is not able to reach till the internet, but their outside interface able to reach till the internet. And what this used to say, we have provided the internet connectivity to the Palo Alto Fire, but we are not able to download the updates. We are not able to fetch the license from the Palo Alto support portal. What is the problem? Problem is that you have you have to modify the service route because you know to fetch the these particular dynamic updates or these license details from the support portal. Generally, Palo Alto use by default, it will use the management interface. Now you have to forcefully tell the Palo Alto firewall to start using the Ethernet 1 by 1 interface when he is trying to communicate with the Palo Alto support portal or either Palo Alto update server. So in these kind of scenarios, we have to modify the service route. That is your service route, guys, in your Palo Alto firewall or in your Pan OS. So guys, that's it. We, I'm stopping here. We have completed the five questions. And next five questions we will discuss in your next lecture. Thank you.